and welcome to Strength Based Marketing. I'm Pat Dewar. My guest today is someone I've actually known for uh, probably 15 years, uh, close to uh, 12 to 15 years. Uh, we met, you know, networking with uh, actually kind of a almost like a mastermind. It was like a group of people that were real creative in the digital realm. And he pretty much blew me away at the time with his, uh, his concepts and the things that he's doing, his creativity. And the more I've learned about him, the more I've found that he really is somebody who's been in the uh, creative technical realm. I guess he'd like to say before Al Gore invented the internet. And uh, the, the point though is, is that today, during this COVID-19 lockdown, he's been able to take this time and create something new, which I thought was brilliant. And, uh, and I really wanna uh, get into uh, having you meet Chris Fiola. And Chris, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, I appreciate you having me. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, I wanna know basically the business that you do and what happened 90 days ago, what you created and how you're either launching it already or what you're doing. Because a lot of people need ideas right now. So take it away. Yeah, just like anyone else, it's you know, one of the advantages I should say to, to being an old guy like me is that uh, you've been around the block a few times, right? And you've, you've, you've been through a few disasters and you know you're not as shocked as you, I guess I would say you're still shocked, but you're not surprised anymore. So when the COVID shutdowns started, you know, and they started to become a thing before we had the, uh, the uh, uh, ordered shutdowns, when people started just stopping going out and everything, we were just starting to um, socialize some, uh, a new product that we were working on. We were still, still selling the old stuff, still mostly selling the, uh, uh, the platform. And we were thinking about a new product and the way that we like to do this, I'm a great believer in, in management by walking around, go to networking meetings, talk to people, see what they're worried about, see what they're thinking about. And I literally went to a networking meeting, the first big one and pitched, um, a week before Texas shut down. And so <laughs> it's, and so the, the thing is, is that that's an iterative process. You run three yards, you fall down, you get up, you pick up the football and you say, okay, now what do we do? You, you keep doing it and doing it. So doing it once and then having the, the state shut down for, you know, what turned out to be months. Um, well, the country shut down the world in a lot of ways. Um, we knew that wasn't going to work. And because we were sort of betting on transitioning to this new product um that left us in a bad position and so as soon as the uh the payroll protection uh loans came out we applied for one of those and we were fortunate to get one of those and we said okay what do we do with this money well we can't sell there's no place to go to sell and we're not really in a position to start automating selling online because I'm a great believer in selling and marketing in person first. So you can see where people are rolling your eyes and where people don't get what you're saying and where people are just like, no, that's forget that. And where, where people are engaging with you and, and you can't start online do, doing that. And so <clears throat> we talked about it. We thought about it. We said, look, we have a little time here. Now we were fortunate to get that loan. So why don't we instead build out the product? Why don't we instead position ourselves for where things are going to be in the summer and the fall and in coming years, rather than try to deal with what's going on at the moment, which you know we all hope is at least a temporary situation and which has proven to be uh, at least somewhat temporary, although things have not returned to where they were. But things never return to where they were. They always, <clears throat> the next thing comes, you know, and it moves on. And the next thing that's coming here, I think, uh, is fairly clear at this point. Um, for the last two years or so, the European Union has been really, really, really cracking down on security and especially privacy. 
and you can see the same thing starting to happen with uh, the United States now. Um, there's a section of the uh, um, uh, Mill Digital Millennium um, uh, Act. I want to say it's section 340. It might be 320. I might have the number wrong. Oh, yeah. I read that uh, last week. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. But it's... <laughs> But, but to explain it in a nutshell, the way, and, and I come out of the newspaper industry and the media industry, so this is something that I've been dealing with for my entire career. But the, if, if you write a letter to the editor and I publish it in my newspaper, and then Joe Blow um, says, hey, that letter he wrote slandered me, they can sue me because I published it. However, if you write a book and I put it in my bookstore and sell it, Joe Blow can't sue me because I'm not publishing the book. I'm just a merchant who's selling books that someone else um, has published. And that's been a distinction in the law going back literally centuries. Well, when they did mm -hmm. the Digital Millennium Act, what they said was the whole internet is a bookstore legally. So you can't sue anybody for doing anything. Well, the question is, <clears throat> that was probably a good idea when the law was passed in 1996, because, you know, a zillion people were posting all sorts of things on AOL, because AOL is the biggest company in the world. Remember that? <laughs> Actually do. Yeah. <laughs> And there's no way that AOL could go through those millions and zillions of messages and decide which ones to keep and which ones to throw away. And so probably treating them like a bookstore made sense. But as we all know, Google reads your mail while you're still writing it. <laughs> you know, it's not even they read the mail that you that you were sent. They're reading it while you're typing. They're already like, hey, he's got a typo in there. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that guy. So. <clears throat> So the, there are, they are exerting controls now, like a publisher. They are deciding what can and can't go online. Does that, should that move them into the publisher slash newspaper role? Um, that's a big debate in Washington now. So what does this all have to do with, with what, what we're up to? Well, what we've done is uh, move things to a blockchain basis. Blockchain is a technology that's normally associated with cryptocurrency, but it yeah. allows each individual user we're not using cryptocurrency we're using blockchain and we're using <clears throat> uh, public key encryption but it allows each individual user to control each individual piece of content well, let me give you an example um if you've ever seen the great technology training film the lord of the rings the two towers you remember that one idiot with a torch blows up the wall in the impregnable castle you know, is, is no longer impregnable and all the orcs come in and things are bad. Um, that describes- I love the nerdy <laughs> reference, by the way. If you haven't seen those shows, I'm sorry. You know, you just, <laughs> sorry. We, Go ahead. I think we're all nerds on this bus. <laughs> but but the that explains the Experian uh, breach. That explains the target breach. How does somebody get 40 million user records or 110 million user records? And the answer is, that's how modern security has worked up until now. There's not individual pieces of data secured. There's a big wall. And if someone blows a hole in the wall, everything is vulnerable and everything gets stolen. What we've done is reverse that. So if you write an email, that email is written down and encrypted on blockchain. And you can then decide who you give a key to. And you can take the key back. You can, you can write a proposal and that proposal disappears after 30 days. No more, hey, that proposal's no good after, after August 1st or that just, just goes away. You can send a picture and it's no more anything you post lives on the internet forever. You can share a picture with your friends and then take it down next week. You can completely control your privacy and security. So we were originally just gonna launch that as a communications product email, but we've taken the time. So we've also done file sharing and, and a few other things. We're, we're primarily focused on the business market to start because this replaces the, uh, 
VPNs and the other security that you have. You know, security right now is it's a lot of stuff that you buy and you pray that it works and you have no real indication. Uh, look at the number of companies that are getting hammered with uh, ransomware now. The entire city of Baltimore was taken down by ransomware. And then in, a, uh, in an ironic um, um, twist, they tried to get around that by um, taking out a bunch of Gmail accounts and Google shut them down because it looked like it was a, a spam setup when all these <laughs> addresses that said city on them. So <laughs> it's nice. just, there was no winning for losing in that mess. <laughs> Okay, let me decode something here because I want to make sure I'm hearing what you're saying. I'm not as technical as you. Obviously, I'm as nerdy as you, which is awesome. <laughs> but um, so if I if I send an email, if I post a picture, you have this software that basically it's like it it breaks it down into a way that somebody trying to hack that thing would have to almost snip one piece at a time to decode it, which would take an eternity. And the people that break down walls are more like cockroaches because it's just a, like this. And then they want to get in and just, and you're making it so that it's extremely difficult because if that's the case, then I'm going, the world's your oyster. Well, that is <laughs> your interpretation is exactly correct. Think of this. How many emails have you sent today? Uh, not many, because I've been, I, I, I do a lot of training. I did a webinar today. So maybe a few. So a few emails, a couple of webinars today. Not three or 400, but I'd only send a few. Okay. Every single one of them is encrypted separately in our system. So to get your work from today, if you got three or 400 emails, sent say 12 for a round number and did three webinars, they would have to hack you three or 400 times to get your incoming email, 12 times to get the ones you wrote, and three more times to get your webinar. But it sounds like it would take four hours for each email. Each one, yes, exactly. And that's just to, for them to hack today, okay? It's just what you did today. They're gonna work that hard, dude. <laughs> no, nobody is gonna work that hard. But, but the, the difference is when they got 112 uh, um, customer records, 112 million customer records out of Experian, that was one hack, one, okay? One hack now gets one of your emails from today. Have you called Baltimore yet? <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet, no. We're but you, I mean, am I, am I reading you right that there's, yes. there's this, uh, there's huge potential for people to, now, here's one question that would kind of in the back of my mind, my little chatter, and and maybe maybe you hear people ask this. I don't know. If I send you an encrypted email like you're talking about, blockchain email, can you open it easily? Yeah, there's a if there's a link in it, and it leads you back, and you can create a read-only account so you can read read the email. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like the the when you sign online in a way where you have to go through a bunch of things to to like uh get to no, not you, only, like, you only have to do that once okay the, this is this is not like the sign online we have to go through all that rigmarole every time this is like a normal email account when you're sending it from um one person with encryption to another person with encryption and if you're sending it to someone outside then there's an invitation for them to come and join the party and once they're in the party See, now, the, would easiest, you... the easiest way to think about this is think of a set of keys, okay? Instead of just letting anybody come and use your, your, your summer house, you know, who happens to drive by, you give right. out a set of keys, okay? And someone with a key can come in. And so that's, so even when you're, you're going to someone who doesn't use the system currently, you're sending them a key and saying, here's where the house is, here's how do you, here's how do you use your key. And just like a set of keys, um, you can take the key back. That's how we can get something, get something back. Because, every, because the way the system works, okay, is when someone puts a key in, it asks the system, the file asks the system, is this key authorized? And you could say that key is authorized every day in July. 
and it's not authorized in August. And so that proposal just disappears for that person. Okay. So, so, you know, we have some things that are just like friends. And then we have others that are business type mm -hmm. of, of dealings. If somebody wants to send us an email. Does it get encrypted coming in? Yes. And if it's going out and it's going to an, a, a friend or an acquaintance, is it very hard for them to, in a sense, get the clearance and how would you notify them? This is, it's, this is the way you open this. Yeah, it's as simple as clicking on a link and then following the instructions. Um, yeah. We do some things to verify it. But, but again, the, the level of control here, I, w I wanna sort of um, lay this out for you here. The level of the control is you can send an email and say, no one can reply to this email. No one can edit what I put in here. No more of this um, file comparison where, where is the proposal I sent out the same one I got back. <laughs> you can say, you can reply to this email, but you can't forward it to anyone who's outside my original recipients. Right. You can have complete control over your privacy and the use of your content. This also has huge implications for publishers. If you could publish content and then control it so it doesn't immediately get washed all over the internet, here's a crazy idea. You could like, you know, monetize your content. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So here's the question. Mm -hmm. When is, has it, has this already been, you know, brought to the market? And it's, if so, or it has it, it has? It's in beta right now. We're, okay, we're, test, we're testing with the- uh, so As we come out of this lockdown, what are the steps you're gonna take um, to take advantage of this time you've created this new baby uh, and uh, uh, to really launch, uh, relaunch the business as we come out? Because I don't, that's what I want this broadcast to really be about, so. Yeah, well, there's, there's, there's a couple things we're gonna do. This is one of those things where I know even talking about this and, and you're wonderful in, 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 I can't even say that word. I don't know why I'm trying, <laughs> but, but uh, you're a wonderful interviewer here. And, and, but I, I know it still sounds a little confusing when you see this, it is so simple and so easy to use. There's literally a picture of a lock and you say, you say replies, no replies. <laughs> That's if it's locked, it is, Oh, I don't know. Locked, you know, it's so hey. easy to see it. Yes, so, you know, idiot, prove it, Pat, prove it, whatever works for you. I'm. It, it's, it's it's so simple when you see it, and so what we're going to do is we're gonna, we're going to hit networking events and, and do presentations, and we're going to have our own uh, wine and cheese parties. You know, free wine, free cheese. You got to listen to me show you this thing for fifteen minutes. Seems like a fair deal, right? So oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, duh, you know. It, they, they sell condos that way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but once we get once we get get to that, we're you know we're going to be have the ability to uh, purchase and sign up um, on, online for this, and you know we're going to uh, go go heavy into online marketing as soon as we have smoothed out the presentation. You know, I mean, the one thing that we're we're lacking right now is the ability to see people react, and you know, hopefully, we're going to get this summer to the point where we're doing some networking meetings and stuff again, and we could talk to customers, so. You know, it's uh, it's fascinating. I, I really know there are a lot of people, you know, even in the, the strength-based marketing group and, and around the country that they are concerned about creating content that's just gonna re be yanked. Yeah. Um, create, giving proposals and, and having that, that person hold on to the proposal for like six months, and by then, there's a whole different offer. There's a whole different system. It doesn't even make sense anymore. And so having something expire, you know, that would be a really brilliant idea to have something be able to send out and uh, not that attorneys would do this, but change it and send it back. It's a 50 page document. It looks yeah. the same, but it's been, it's been edited. Not that that would ever happen. I don't know. <laughs> But it, that sounds really, really great. How would somebody get a hold of you, Chris, and, and, and to learn more and maybe even to see, is there a way to be a part of the, the beta or beyond? Yes. 
that or to acquire the product afterwards? Yeah, it's privacychain.email. Um, sign up. There's a sign up sheet right there. Privacy.email. No, privacy chain. Oh, privacy. <laughs> words. No, privacychain.email. Yes? Yes. Okay, I'll make sure that that's posted in the in in the uh, description and uh, and folks, I encourage you to reach out to Chris. I mean, it's it's interesting when you <laughs> when you get in up get in the ether that he breathes. It it, it can seem a little bit. Uh, I get kind of lost in the technology, but I realize that this is a guy that's been there, done that, and has seventeen T-shirts for it. Um, and has the authority to speak in this realm. I've been, I've seen him do some really creative things years ago, and he was always on that cutting edge. This is bleeding edge stuff, because I know that every bank in the country ought to be talking to you, every government, you know, entity. Baltimore, if you're listening, <laughs> Chris, uh, you, you know what I mean. I mean, you know, several of our our. Uh, you know, the, the electric, electric companies, you know, power companies. Anything that you would encourage people to do, Chris, as we sign off, uh, to really take action, have hope as we pull out of this COVID-19 lockdown? Yeah, I, I would like to tell everybody, you know, the, the old man story. And that is, you know, I was a photographer when the Marcos government fell in the Philippines. You know, you it's it's interesting now to go back and watch movies like Red Dawn, you know, and then have to explain to your kids not only not only what those people were fighting, but who the Soviet Union was. Okay, so every generation we're terrified of something. Every generation um, something scary happens. Um, early years of Saturday Night Live, Chevy Chase used to walk around with a needle sticking out of his arm because of the swine flu, which was going to kill us all. All of these things come and go. They, they're all the worst thing in the world. And then the next year, it's the next worst thing. So this too shall pass and life will go on and life continues to improve. You know, it's the most important thing to remember is you have to drive looking forward. Okay. All you're going to do if you're looking in the rearview mirror is crash your car and be really sad. So look forward. <laughs> I, it's so funny because I, I'm sorry, folks. I, I, any reference that he's had today, I'm like, I saw that show. I saw that show. More than <laughs> time. And, and, uh, and so, uh, yeah, I agree with you so much, Chris. This is a time period we got to take action. Uh, I, I encourage people to, when you watch these, that you take, take the information in. And if you don't add implementation, there's no way for transformation to occur. What we're in right now, it, we aren't going back. This is the new normal for today. And don't worry, there'll be a new normal tomorrow too. And so, you know, keep pushing forward continue to get the ideas, but if you don't take action, because information, folks with implementation creates transformation. That's what I'm all about. For businesses and lives and folks around the world to try to activate them to create the destiny that they want. Thank you so much for being on Strength Based Marketing. This is Pat Dewar. Uh, folks, we'll see you next time.